Bob, are you ready for this episode? Bombastic side eye. Bob says we can start. So. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Safari Pedals Show. I'm your host, Abby. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Safari Podcast YouTube Zoo Thing Wild Bandwagon World. It's great to have you. So, for those of you who are chilling and existing in the music industry, it is not a place for the faint of heart. <laughs> and I'm only at the beginning of my career, but I noticed that real fast. So, I really wanted to do an episode about it because you got to be either really crazy or really passionate to jump into an industry like this. So, hence, young, dumb, and in the music industry. So, GQ, aka Garrett Humble, who we will welcome into the Safari podcast universe in just a moment, is coming onto the show and we're going to discuss being young, dumb, and in the music industry. What got him into the music industry and what helps him stay going in a place that is just an unpredictable and often wild safari ride. So... <laughs> guys, please give a warm safari welcome to... GQ. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? What's up? Welcome to the show. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for being on. So That didn't even sound like English. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on. I like mispronounced that so bad. Like what just happened? Anywho, <laughs> before we dive into today's episode, who are you and what do you do? So uh, my name's Garrett Humble. I... Uh, I'm an audio engineer, I'm a guitarist, I'm a drummer, I'm a singer, songwriter. Um, I've been playing music since like seventh grade. I, uh, I just graduated from USC last May, so fight on. I'm a military brat, so um, I haven't lived anywhere longer than four years, but I've called Los Angeles my home for about five years now, off and on with COVID and stuff. But yeah, I try to just do a little bit of all of it. Do you have like a pri a primary title that you like to say that you wear in terms of the many hats you do wear? I I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe it's a little uh slimy, but I I sort of change my answer depending on who I'm talking to. It's like, yeah, I love this more than anything in the world. Uh, but that's not to say that I'm like lying. It's just these are equivalent like interests of mine in the music field. Um, and I will say, you know, nobody's going to be super excited when you're like, Oh, I like sort of do that. So today guys, we are talking, um, being young, young, dumb, and in the music industry. I want to preface before we dive into your take on the matter that audio, I would say is definitely in my circle, an unconventional career choice. What got you into the music industry knowing that it's a pretty unconventional career path? So I'd have to, I'll just go through my path, my, my story. Basically in middle school, I mean, I did concert band in seventh grade. Uh, my family was a number of musicians and, you know, high school marching band, uh, various things like that. My mom played the bass clarinet and I decided that I wanted to be a drummer in, in seventh grade and just did that thing. And then in eighth grade, I picked up guitar and I'd been singing since I was a kid, you know, however shittily that was. Loved the Beatles. I made my first band in eighth grade. We were called the Nuclear Spider Sharks. It was it was pretty awesome. We only played like four Beatles covers and I sang while playing drums and we didn't have a bassist, but we had three guitarists. It was great. I, I've loved music for a long time being a performer. And in high school, I knew that I wanted to do music for for the rest of my life. I had this plan that I was going to go to school and I was going to double major in music and political science because I'm also very politically driven and 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 very uh, interested in activism and, and and things like that. I was at an honors music conference. So the, the high school system that I was in, it's the military kids schools called Dodea. They have a an annual like conference where you have to audition and all the kids so like i went to high school in germany in in stuttgart and i would meet kids who were at the bases in 
England and Cambridge or, or wherever or Italy or, and all come together. So at one of these conferences, my band director sat me down and was like, Hey, I know you really want to do music, but I don't think you should major in it because I majored in music and that only qualified me to be a band director. And I love that. And that's cool for me, but I know you don't want to be a high school band director. So don't do that. So I said, okay, I went to USC and it's always funny when people ask me what I majored in because I majored in philosophy, politics, and economics. And I got a master's degree in the studies of law and I don't want to do anything with it. <laughs> I, I don't want it professionally at least, let's say, but I minored in music recording. And this, this was the deal I had made with my parents that it was like, you know, music, you don't need a degree in music to be a musician. A lot of the best ones don't, you know, you don't have to have that credential to, to make it, especially for what I want to do. It's like a punk rock ska artist. Credentials are not necessary. So I got my degree in something that was a backup, that was my safety. So, you know, the deal was if in five years I'm not a rock and roll star, I'll go and be a lawyer or like president or something. We're hoping not because that would just be bad for everybody. But <laughs> um, I'd much rather like ruin people's days by making them listen to my shitty music than like, you know, deciding laws. So that being said... I, I got to USC and I was doing that exact plan and I was like, I'm going to go in, I'm going to use all their resources, get the tools, learn how I can do this while doing all my classes. And then I discovered what audio engineering was because the, it just hadn't been taught to me as a kid as like a thing that existed. Like, again, huge Beatles fan. So I knew about like Brian Epstein and all these guys, right? These recording techniques or whatever. But nobody said like, hey, this is a job that you could do. You can like be this person. And I, and I didn't know what that meant, but I, I just picked up the minor because I was like, well, if I want to be an artist, I should be able to go in a studio and know what I'm talking about. And I studied with uh, Brian Maloof, who is an amazing professor um, and a very good, good person. And my eyes were just opened. I was like, oh, this is what I want to do every day now. I don't want to do any of this other stuff because this, it's creative, it's fulfilling. And I always find anytime I'm in a studio and I'm engineering, whether I'm like actively engineering and recording somebody or mixing something or I'm assisting and I'm just getting people coffee, I want nothing more than to go and do it myself. Like it's work that inspires my passion. And I find that a lot of other jobs, like, you know, being a lawyer or something lame like that, you know, you get home at the end of the day and you're so drained that you just want to sit and play Xbox or something. But when I get home from the studio, I just immediately pick up my guitar and start playing. And it's also so important. And I love that you said that. <laughs> also, it made me laugh being a lawyer. Lame. Yeah, lame. It's Whatever. So, lame. so we, boring. We don't need lawyers. I think we can just like get rid of it as a concept. Exactly. Um, That's actually my ideology. No it, more lawyers. Is that the activism you do? End lawyers. <laughs> And lawyers. Listen to yeah. my music. And lawyers. Yes, yeah, exactly. That'll be the name of the first EP. That sounds really lit, and <laughs> I look forward to <laughs> I look forward to streaming it. As everybody who is in the music industry knows, it is a safari out there. I think you could agree. Maybe it's a little, it's a little bit crazy. Yeah. Especially like being young people in it, there are many learning curves and many kerfuffles and many things. Um, what are some either lessons, mistakes, things that you've kind of had run-ins with that are shaping where you're headed? So the, the first thing I've learned is write everything down and make sure that you have the phone number of the person who can fix the problem that you cause, for one thing. When somebody is showing you a studio and showing you how to turn it on, like I learned that I have to write everything down. And some things, they seem so simple. Turn this button on first, turn this button on second. And if that's all of the rules, you think that you would remember that and you don't. The scary thing is dealing with, I mean, really expensive equipment. 
when you when you're really getting into it and you are in these nice studios you're responsible for all of this stuff nobody's like checking on you to make sure that you're doing it correctly as you're doing it you know if you're assisting or you're in a studio just kind of helping out like you're you're just letting the people that are in the studio do their thing and then you just have to make sure that you clean up and turn everything off or turn it on when before they get there and make sure the mic's good nobody is watching you do that because everybody else is doing more important things and if you mess that up and you forget about that you get told you know later when you can't fix that it's been a, a learning experience to do it right the first time. I have probably 10 different notes on my phone that's just this studio instructions, this studio instructions. Even at my new uh, job that I work at a hotel on, on Hollywood, I have a notepad. This is how to hook up to the projector. This is how to turn on the TV. This is, you know, cause you just, for small things like that, consistency is key. That's such a smart idea. I've, it's never dawned on me to do that. So. I'm going to be taking your advice and everyone watching should take Garrett's advice because that is like, it's like minimizing ways that you can screw up. There's so much learning the hard way. I mean, the thing I've always been told uh, in classes and by mentors is the job of the engineer, regardless of recording, mixing, mastering, like what, whatever you're doing, your actual job is to solve problems and to keep the vibe going. It doesn't matter how good of, a, of an engineer you are, if you're an asshole, nobody wants to work with you. And if you can't solve problems, nobody will want to work with you because there's always gonna be a problem. There will always be something going on. And if you're cool and collected and you figure it out, people more often than not are gonna be more happy that you solved it than anything else. And that's also a theme. It's funny you say that because like a theme that I've heard with the guests that I've spoken to recently is like the emphasis on don't be an asshole. And like, you guys heard it before and you heard it again. I think like a huge takeaway of like doing well in this industry is that your character trumps everything mm -hmm. else. Cause like, I guess we can always get better at recording snares, but like if you're a dingbat, and not nice then yeah you can't teach nice and and i think the reason it keeps coming up is it sounds like a low bar but i just kind of think that that's where we're at these days like it takes so little effort to be nice to somebody or just not be mean and people just don't do that people get in their own heads yeah this industry is not for the faint of heart that's yeah. what i've learned how like on the note of it not being for the faint of heart, like how do you feel with all the unpredictability? Like, do you enjoy that it's unpredictable in let's say like a nine to five probably would be a lot less. Like, do you enjoy that end of the industry? In, in my background, like I said, I'm a, I'm a military brat. So I've never lived anywhere longer than four years. Um, so I am very, I don't want to say comfortable, but I'm used to unpredictability. And I've done a lot of things in my life and I've, I've traveled a lot in, in various ways. You just have to be ready. You just have to be ready to do things and, and just kind of suck it up. At school, I was in the marching band for four years as well. For those of you that don't know, the Trojan marching band is the greatest marching band in the history of the universe ever. And there's a reason that it has that name because they do everything i mean they do high profile gigs to funerals like i performed personally with gwen stefani at the hollywood bowl i uh i was in olivia rodrigo's good for you music video i performed for the red hot chili peppers at uh hollywood when they got their their star this band like they do crazy shit of high intensity high caliber performances but they go to every single football game since 1984 they've been to every single one home and away getting 300 people the big trip is is always to notre dame and and you go to chicago and then you go to notre dame getting 300 plus people from los angeles to chicago on five different Southwest flights into the hotel is not an easy task with instruments of varying size, not an easy task and have them all 
actually do their proper diligence and and learn their music and play their parts and not get too drunk the night before it's hard and and it ends up sometimes that like i think my first notre dame trip my first my freshman year you uh we played the whole game which by the way notre dame fans are the worst fans in all of college football it's only game why you have to be mad i've never heard worse things yelled at me as a 17 year old wearing marching band gear you're done with this game that you just lost you gotta march all the way back back playing the whole time getting on the bus at 2 a.m to drive back from south bend to chicago you show up back at the hotel the travel director goes all right we're getting on the plane in an hour that's just it that's just how the gig was that was four years of that and it it that builds character and being a military brat has built character. What I've learned from like what you said about your experience in the band is that like thick skin and mm -hmm. persistence, no matter how much things just like suck. Yeah. And I think that's like, like you just have to, that's like the name of the game in this industry, whether you like it or not, son, be, you gotta be ready. But, um, it sounds like in a way that like, it's a good industry for you if you'd prefer that over sitting at a desk making PowerPoint presentations. It's it certainly feels more fulfilling. It, in in particular, more fulfilling than other areas of the music industry. Like there's a lot of execs and a lot of boardrooms and a lot of meetings and stuff that this is this is the nice middle ground. I think engineering is that nice middle ground between being a full-fledged artist and the like boardroom you're like, this is how we're going to make people like this. And the engineer's like, hey, man, I'm just here to record and make it sound good and, and do my thing. Is inter like from everything you said, it, a light bulb in my head went off. I was thinking about it er earlier this week because um, I have some friends who are just about to start university and they're like doing all these entrance, entrance exams and all these things. And they're like eating shit, you can say, like really like they're working their butts off. And I thought about it. I'm like, how much as a creative are we willing to pay with the instability of not knowing what will happen with your career? Like, is it worth having a fulfilling job and rather than going and doing something that's more secure, but might mm -hmm. not make you feel anything at all. So that really just like the things connected in my brain like this, they just, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's a good point i mean what what my mom has always told me is you know it's never either or like you don't have to be a rock star or something else like there's plenty of examples that like brian may of queen helped get the mars rover on mars like he's an astrophysicist crazy smart dude um in the punk community, there's a lot of people uh, like the lead singer for Bad Religion has a PhD in zoology and like wrote his thesis on evolution and religion and how those tie into each other. And like used to teach college classes and be a punk rocker. Dexter Holland of The Offspring has a PhD in, in microbiology from USC. It's very possible. It, I think it's probably hard to do. I don't think it's an easy thing because it's not easy being a microbiologist, period. If you're passionate about something, I don't think you have to sacrifice either one. I don't think passions are ever conflicting. It's just hard to figure out how to make them coincide. That was really inspirational. I thoroughly Thank enjoyed you. that. That was wonderful. I'm, I had a thought. I was like, I'm going to edit in some really nice music, like butterflies and like a nice <laughs> string sec section, maybe a marching band of sorts hey. to kind of sum up the whole concept of being young dumb and in the music industry i always like to ask um the amazing guests to give the amazing studio animal viewers at home either a piece of advice or something that you want to say what do you want to tell the people that they should know or to anyone who's afraid of being young dumb and in the music industry i would recommend to anybody who is interested in this by any means be adaptable do whatever you can i've heard this advice before that like the best microphone is the one in your hand that you're recording with we can get into the specifics and it's kind of fun to talk about 
oh, this preamp's better than this preamp. This one has this sound. This mic has this sound, whatever. But I think the, the most important thing, if you don't have schooling, the connections, if you don't have any of that base, just do what you can. I mean, I've done I've done some sketchy things in terms of proper power management, in terms of proper audio signal flow. In high school, I was tasked with hooking up all of the amps for the jazz band, which was 200 watt amplifier, guitar tube amplifiers, 250 watt, maybe 75 uh, solid state bass amps, two pianos and a, a bunch of other shit. And I ran it all through one outlet in the wall through like six different power strips. Thankfully, the entire school, Stuttgart High School, is built out of concrete. (laughs) (laughs) If something ever happened, everybody would be okay. But I was 16, 17 years old. There weren't any other options. We only had the one and it worked. That that would be my, based on my entire life experience, which some may say is brief, be adaptable. Do something. It doesn't always have to be the right thing, but do something. Garrett for president, everybody. No, thank you. So, um, guys... I, I would personally recommend being young, dumb, and in the music industry. There's worse things. There are worse career paths. So I would say just like, as long as you buckle your seatbelt for the ride, you should be fine. Like, and that's the, that's the take. That's it. Thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This this was really fun. This was good. Everyone, once again, warm safari round of applause to Garrett, aka GQ.